It's easy to mobilise people when the injustice is fresh, but it's always hard to keep people turning out. Constitutional enshrinement of the voice is vital to ensure that it's not silenced by a hostile government in the future. I am a Kararig Aboriginal man and Kalkagal Arabumle Torres Strait Islander. I'm um, the National Indigenous Officer of the Maritime Union of Australia. Uh, I was a Wolfie for 16 years, uh, an official since 2010, and I live on Larrakia country. I love the wharf. It was uh, a great place to work, to learn about solidarity, to learn about social justice, to learn about where uh, workers uh, conditions came from and as a as an indigenous person it was a great lesson for me about how we had won our rights over a long history of struggle um, not just through our own courage and determination and activism but through solidarity through unions like uh, the one that I became a member of The mural depicts solidarity. Uh, all across this mural is, is people helping, you know, the working class helping each other. But more to it, if you look at the detail, there's a whole lot of uh, support for broader struggles, you know, not just our own wages and conditions on the wharf, but also for peace, for justice, all of those things that, uh, that really shaped Australia to be what it is today, and a lot of Australians take for granted. Um, you know, this mural depicts all of that, and it also reminds me of the solidarity that goes way back with my people. We must establish a voice and we must protect it in the Constitution and we must mature this nation and give our children uh, the greatest gift of all, which is uh, a nation that they can be proud of, that will close the gap and that can celebrate over 60,000 years of continuing culture as what constitutes us. Something that was life-changing for me was going to the United States with Paddy Crumlin, the National Secretary of the MUA. I was in my early 20s and I'd never left the country and I managed to get my passport in time, uh, went off to the, to the United States, uh, hardly had left, you know, Little Darwin before that. And that was, uh, that was a real eye-opener for me. Uh, and then to be amongst uh, people like the Reverend Al Sharpton and Malcolm X's daughter, Martin Luther, you know, Martin Luther King's daughter, um, the, the celebration of African-American history, beatboxing and tap dancing and poetry. You know, for a guy that was from Darwin and just played rugby and was pretty rough around the edges and all the rest, um, that, that, was, that was something that was really special. That was an experience that I think helps today as I run around the country and have robust debate and discussions and trying to move people and it set me in good stead for this work. Unity is more than just a word that you can say, you know, that you just say on the streets at a rally or at a protest. Uh, but unity is um, something that requires structure and discipline, the ability to choose representatives, um, you know, the, the rules around that and, uh, and compromise. Compromise amongst yourselves, you know, amongst each other uh, about how you can agree to go forward in a united way. What inspires me to keep working for the Uluru Statement is that I know what it calls for is right. I know it comes from a unique process that achieved a genuine consensus, a national consensus of our people, and that a voice is, is absolutely vital. We're playing a, a huge role in supporting the Uluru Statement and the campaign for a voice, um, but it's always been you know, something that has uh, been a given when we were approached to support these struggles and, um, and uh, is not something that we're out there beating our chest about. We have a great opportunity ahead of us. Uh, this commitment to a referendum, that's not just a once in a generation opportunity, it's a once in generations opportunity. We have established voices as Indigenous people, representative bodies, over and over throughout history. And every time we've built a voice strong enough to challenge the decision makers that are harming us, they've silenced our voice. Um, as a union member, as a, as a unionist, I know that a voice is how you advance a collective of people in a coherent and effective way. And I, I just know um, absolutely that when we establish a voice in the constitution so hostile governments can't 
um, can't remove it, that we will uh, be able to close the gap and everything that we need to achieve as a people and a country are going to happen much easier when that happens.